I'll be completely truthful and transparent with you. There really is an entire industry devoted to lying to you. They they are dependent on tricking you out of your money. And in most cases, they're only concerned about making money for themselves. They're only interested in making money from you instead of giving you the information that you really need. So today I'm going to help you to break that cycle. I'm going to show you how to start an affiliate marketing business for less than 50 bucks a year. So this is a module that I've taken from inside my group coaching program. I'll put a link to that somewhere in the description if you're interested. But to make sure that you stick with this video and you watch the entire training session, I'm going to remove all YouTube ads from this. So that means you will not be interrupted. So that's going to give you the best possible chance for, for learning what I've got to teach you and then implementing what you need to to take action. So before we really drill into things, if you're starting for the first time, then you're going to choose, you're going to have to choose a niche. Now, this is probably one of the most misunderstood steps and the biggest mistake that most newbies make because they approach the word niche in the wrong way. In fact, what you really need to do is think of the word niche as a need. So ask yourself, what does someone need from you? Okay, so what can you give someone that's going to help them to solve a very specific problem? So you need to think of niches as needs, as problems that you can help solve. And that should be your starting point. So to find your niche, I want you to think about the things that already interest you. Okay, think about the things that you're already good at and make a list of those. And we're going to take that list. We'll go to the computer now and we'll validate it. So we're going to jump into one of the lessons from inside my group coaching program. Now, the first thing that you want to do is go to Google, type in Google Trends and Let's verify that your niche is evergreen. So let's say you've decided on the guitar niche. You're going to teach people how to play guitar. So someone might Google a key phrase like learn guitar. Now we're going to break it down into sub niches in a few minutes, but we just want to see that there's enough interest in this niche all year round. So here we can see that the line, although it peaks in places, it is pretty consistent. So we want to make sure that over the last 12 months, and let's go worldwide. So we can see that, yep, there is a decent amount of interest in this niche. But we want to take it a step further. So we want to zoom out. So let's go to the past five years just to make sure that it's not decreasing over time. And there we can see, yeah, pretty good, it's fairly consistent right across the previous five years. Now, we need to validate that there is money in this niche. So people are spending. So let's go back to Google. Let's go to Amazon and what we're going to do is have a look for books in this niche. So we go to the search bar, type in learn guitar, make sure that we're on books and search. Next, we want to make sure that people are buying these books because you know what Kindle is like, people can publish information about any topic they want, but it doesn't mean that there's a market for that information. So to validate that there's a market here, we need to look at the, the number of comments or reviews people are leaving 
on these products. So this one has got over 3000 reviews. If we click on that, we need to see that they are verified purchases. There we go. Verified purchase, verified, verified purchase, verified purchase. The next step to validate this niche is to make sure that people are spending money on Google. So if we type in learn guitar, what we would hope to see are these ads. So this is an ad at the very top, second place, third place. That's good. So we can see that there are at least three businesses competing for ad space under this key phrase. The next step, the final step in validating this niche is to make sure that digital products are being sold in this space. So if we type in Clickbank Marketplace, If we type in learn guitar into the marketplace, again, just like Amazon, we can see that products are being submitted and published on this platform, but we need to make sure that people are buying. So, we need to change how this information is presented. So if we go to gravity and we just move it a little bit, we don't have to move it very much. There we can see that the gravity on these, so that's got a gravity of 2.7, 1.81, gravity of two, so that's good because we can see that people are buying these products and that's all gravity does. It tells us that these products are selling. Okay, so we know that there is money in this niche. Fantastic. But we need to get more specific because if we target learn guitar, if we just enter learn guitar, then the level of competition is going to be too fierce. So we need to decide who we want to teach guitar to. So we could go learn guitar men over 40. And what we're looking for here is content that people are creating that is specifically for, for men who are over 40. So if we go down here, we can see that we have some YouTube videos, this one. So we can see that it's got 5,000 views. That's not too bad. If we go down here, we can see that people are, are engaging with the content. That's a really good sign. So here we want to do a little bit of market research. So if we click on this, what kind of traffic is this getting? So that's 19,000 views. That's pretty good. People are engaging with it. We can see that content for for this segment of the market is ranking on the front page of Google. People are specifically targeting men over 40. So that's a really good sign. However, if you're stuck and you don't know who to target in your in your chosen niche, just put in some short tail keywords, some seed keywords and scroll down to the bottom and here you will have searches related to and this should give you some uh, uh, some extra ideas if you're not happy with that then let's go back to google google trends and if we go down to related topics and we can structure it by rising or top again we have related queries on, and we can structure that by rising or top. And this, all the data here, will give you some really good starting points to help you 
to drill down to the sub niche level. Now that you've got some niche ideas, you've validated that those ideas are indeed profitable. Now we need to do some keyword research to check that people are actually searching for those type of key phrases. So what we're going to do is use a tool called SEM rush. Now I've negotiated a special deal with them so you can use it for free for two weeks. They usually give people a seven day trial, but because you're with profit copilot, they have extended that for you to 14 days. So on the left hand side, we go to keyword analytics. And then we have a keyword magic tool. Click that. And now we can type in your niche ideas. So we were talking about guitar. Let's move on to something else. Let's go weight loss. Let's type that in. Now this is a short tail keyword. Short tail keywords are one to two words long. And the competition is just going to be crazy high. So we really want to avoid those. But we can we can have a look at, at the actual search volume. Let me show you something. So if we go search. Here we can see that in the United States over the last month, for that key phrase weight loss, two hundred thousand people have searched for it, which is is pretty high. But the keyword difficulty is ninety two. If we were to pay for advertising. We would expect to pay two dollars sixty cents per click, but what we do need to do is focus on the the search volume and the keyword difficulty. So you'll notice that generally, the more words that are added to the key phrase, the lower the search volume. So as we scroll down, we can see. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. This is a long tail key phrase best diet for weight loss. The search volume is considerably lower, but the keyword difficulty is still pretty high. So what we need to do is find keywords that have got a relatively high search volume, but low keyword difficulty. So we make life easy for ourselves. So this is is really about grabbing low hanging fruit. You can also find questions that people are asking that's really good for uh, educational content. So there you can see, does apple cider vinegar help with weight loss? <laughs> Excuse me. Search volume 5000. That's well within reach and that, that's a good search volume to go for. But the keyword difficulty is 91. So we might want to avoid that. So if we go down here, 67 keyword difficulty, the search volume is almost 3000. So that could be a good contender. Right now you want to be exporting all the data. So it makes it so easy. Just click that export button, download as much data as you can really hammer it. Use that, use that 14 day access as much as you can. Okay. So now you've got your niche figured out and validated. It's time to take the next step forward. So if you can spend around say $3 a month, on hosting, then you're going to be okay. And this is important because you need to have full control over your website. Don't depend on free hosting. Okay. And really let's think about it because what else can you buy for $3? All right. So you might get one of those posh Starbucks coffees if you're lucky, right? So the reason that you need real hosting that you own is because the free options are just a terrible idea. You know, don't waste your time with Blogger or Wix or WordPress.com. You know, they're all a waste of time because you don't own the website. In effect, you're just borrowing it until they decide that they don't want to deal with you anymore or they don't like what you're doing or they change the terms of service suddenly without any warning. And then you're, you know, you're, you're kind of up, up a creek, right? And you don't have a paddle. So what you do need to do is invest in a self hosted WordPress website. So to do that quickly and easily and cheaply, you're going to need a web host that has C panel. Now you're also going to need a domain name as well. 
But thankfully, they cost around maybe 10 bucks a year, something like that. And I mean, when I first started in the 90s, I couldn't afford a domain name. They used to cost hundreds of dollars every year. But now, you know, you can pick one up for for what the price of a couple of uh, Big Mac meals or something, right? And when we add it all up, it really does come to around less than 50 bucks a year to run an internet business. So the barrier to entry is pretty low, so anyone can do it really. Okay, so let's go back to the computer. I'll show you another lesson from the group coaching program, and that's gonna help you set up a website really quickly in just a few clicks. So the web hosting company that I use are called SiteGround. There's a link below, so click that, go ahead, get set up. We have different hosting options. I recommend you go with managed WordPress hosting. So if there's any problems, you have got support and the support of SiteGround is amazing. Let's have a look at the, the hosting options. You're gonna see a really good offer. So they always have these offers running. So you can get started for £2.95 a month. I don't know how much that comes to in dollars at the moment, but it's gonna be pretty low. And then I think you get this for a year. Maybe you might wanna double check that with support because these offers might change. We click, it's going to ask you to register a new domain name. Now today, I think they cost around 11 or 12 bucks a year. I would recommend getting them both in the same place for the moment, just so you can get up running as fast as possible. When you're choosing your domain name, I would encourage you to go for a .com. Always, always try to get that .com because for branding purposes, that's going to set you off in a, in a much better way. Um, people recognize dot coms if they're searching for something people sometimes they will just put the dot com on the end of whatever they're searching for so when it comes to choosing the domain name itself i'd encourage you to think about the problem that you solve and the end result that someone gets so you want to avoid clever or vague or or funny domain names you want to make it clear crystal clear so the instant someone reads the domain name they know what it is. So once you've got your domain name and your hosting set up, we need to get WordPress. So once you've signed up, and here you can see this is my account. So if I click on here, you'll see that I, I have been using this since 2017. So when I say that I use, I only recommend products and services that I use, I absolutely mean it. So I want you to go to my account, click on control panel, it's going to take you to quite a strange looking page. There's lots going on. Don't worry about it. All you need to really focus on is this bit, auto installers, WordPress. Click on that. You won't believe how quick and easy this is. So we go to install. Then on your version, you will have your domain name here and then you'll be good to go. On my one, because I'm installing this for the first time on, well, for, for demo, I'm going to choose this subdomain name. Don't worry about that too much. As long as your domain name is here and it's saying I don't have an SSL on this. Don't worry about that. You will have an SSL included with the hosting and domain package. You get that for free. Don't worry because it's a, a demo domain. I haven't set that up for me just yet. Think about the site name again. Think about the domain name. Think about the end result. So we might want to put something like uh, make a promise here promise of end result and then some extra keywords we can add other plugins if we want to we don't need any of that stuff WordPress starter easy setup with selection of themes and plugins that's good to have advanced options don't need any of that so there you can see it's installing it right now it's going to happen really fast so we're on 10% and in a second, it's just going to zoom past. So <laughs> there you go. Okay. How cool is that? hundred percent done. And now your website is ready. How quick and easy and painless was that? And let's see it in action. So it's going to be a pretty basic theme. We can sort all that out another time. The website is made and we can also log into the admin panel. Here we can add posts 
can add pages. What's the difference between posts and pages? Well, posts, you think of these as blog articles. This is uh, content that you'll be adding over time. So maybe you, you're on a schedule where you publish once a week a new article. You want to put it in posts. And that is because it allows us to categorize things in a very specific way, which is essential when it comes to optimization. With pages, these are things like your contact page, your about us page, privacy policy. There it's even done it for you. So it's given you legal pages. If you want to add more legal pages, there are plugins available. Let me show you the plugin section. This is really awesome. So if we click here, plugins, add new. We can install a whole heap of free plugins. So the basic ones that I'm going to encourage you to get set up with for the moment is Yoast SEO. So it's going to allow you to optimize your website. So we want to install that and then hit activate when it pops up. There we go. Activate. That's installed. That will do the SEO. What should we go for next? I'm going to go with maybe a caching one. So your website runs fast. So type in cache. We want W3 total cache. That's a pretty good one. Install now. Activate. Let's install some security. So we've got loads of uh, different security options. The one I like is Security, if I can spell it. Actually, Word Defense, that's a really good one too. I recommend that. Or we can go with Security. Where is it? There it is. And now we can go through all the plugins that we've installed and change the settings however we like. So this is going to run scans on your on your website to make sure that it's all nice and clean. It has got a, a firewall as well, but you have to pay for that one. Take a bit of time to explore your WordPress website, play around with it. Um, we can also change the theme. So it comes with uh, these default themes installed, but we can add new and find free themes that might make things look a little bit more professional. So think about your, your niche. So if we're on weight loss, think about the industry you're in as well, uh, the industry you serve. So if we go like maybe weight loss, then you're going to get themes built specifically for, for your niche. Okay, so now that you have your niche and a website set up, you're going to need the next thing, which is an email provider. And you need this so you can send offers to your email list. And the great thing about email is that it can be automated so people receive them the second that they subscribe to your list. And, you know, 90% of the time, we're only going to be promoting to people who are interested. You know, and listen, don't be fooled into spending a lot of money here. Okay, so there's lots of uh, autoresponder services out there, lots of email providers to choose from. But the fact is most will give you around 500 subscribers for free. So, you know, don't don't be tempted to to spend money here because that's not the solution, right? Just get a free option. And then when you have 500 subscribers, you should be making money from that anyway. And then invest in uh, in a premium option or, or upgrade to the full version, you know, but make sure that you're making money before you start paying for it. I mean, I think uh, Aweber is running something like uh, 500 subscribers for free before they ask you to pay. I'll put a link to that in the description because Aweber are the most common email provider for affiliate marketers. And that's probably a really good starting point. You might not stay with Aweber forever, but it's pretty good to, to get up and running with, especially when they give you those uh, 500 for free. So how these work, people will opt into a form that you host on your website. You've probably been through the process yourself. As soon as they opt in, that email address is added to a list. The list stays with these companies. You can export it if you want. You can move it around. It's your list, but they manage the sending of emails to that list. 
and you can automate this. So if you want to make passive income, which I recommend, this is how you do it. And that's why the monetization method, affiliate marketing or product creation doesn't really matter because it's all about the marketing side of it via email. That's the real engine that drives the profit. OK, so you've decided on an email provider that's right for your situation. So now you need to put your email sequence together and we're going to automate this. So it just runs on autopilot from the very second someone subscribes to your email list. Let's say we have a five day email sequence. It can be as long as you want. It doesn't really matter as long as you deliver lots of value in the process. So let's say we have five emails crudely drawn. So day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. So the very first email that you send them should have a link to your lead magnet. That's really important. And then allow the lead magnet to make the money. So in this email, you're not really selling. You're just delivering value, you're building trust. At the end of the first email on day one, you need to tease the second email. So you tell them what's coming next, what's coming tomorrow, what they should expect, why it's important and why they need to look forward to receiving it. This creates a bit of tension, a bit of excitement. So they look forward to the next email. And then on day two, you can send them a story. So let's put an S for story. So you want to talk about your journey, the problems you faced, how you overcame those problems, the obstacles. And make sure that these obstacles and barriers that prevented you from achieving success match your audience's problems. This shouldn't be a problem if you're in the right niche. And that again is a niche that you have passion for. And in this email, you can, if you want to, you can link out or make a recommendation to a product or something that they need. And here you can monetize it. So that's okay. And then in day three, we send another high value email. In this instance, we could go with maybe a case study. So let me put a C on there, a case study, maybe a before and after showing how someone else achieved the results that your audience wants to achieve. Here again, you can link out to an offer. It can be the same offer. It can be a different offer. Doesn't really matter. Then in day four, because we've given them a story, we've shown them a case study. Maybe we want to give them a how to, so a tutorial, how to content to help them solve a problem. Then you can link out to an offer that is going to help take them further on their journey. So you've given them a story, a case study, a how to tutorial. And then on day five, you can make just an explicit offer. So once you follow this format, this formula for email, you should see results because you have both of these two things happening. So we have value plus offer and that's how we do it. That's how we grow the business. That's how we generate profit. So we have this value <laughs> with the crazy you and then the offer. That's how we do it. It's as simple as that. And the more simple we keep it, the better results we're going to get. Because I've often found that it's the intelligent people really struggle with this stuff. So if you're not seeing results, if you're not having much success, it's probably because you're fairly intelligent and you're overcomplicating it, you're overthinking it. But when we boil it down to and, and make it really simple, things start to work. Now you have a website and an email provider. How do you choose which products to promote? Well, I've made that pretty simple. So let's go ahead. Let's go back to the computer and I'll show you how to do it now. Let's go to clickbank.com because that is the world's biggest affiliate marketplace. It's not perfect. There are problems with it. Do your own research before you use this or any other 
platform that I recommend. But if you just want to get up and running fast, then ClickBank is absolutely the biggest and most popular way to do it. So let's click on Affiliate Marketplace and it's going to allow us to choose from offers. Now we touched on this previously, very briefly, but let's go into a bit more detail with it. So let's say, so we've been talking about a couple of different niches, learn guitar. Let's, let's go with that one actually. So let's go with guitar. And what we want to do is pay attention to the filters section here for a second. So we want to move this up a little bit. So now it's only going to show products that have a gravity of one. Truth is, if the gravity, this bit here, is 0.1 or higher, it means the product is selling. Someone is buying it, but the higher the gravity, the more popular the product is. Now, gravity can be manipulated. It frequently is manipulated by marketers to, to kind of persuade affiliates to, to promote their product. What I want you to do is just forget about the actual gravity number. Instead, we want to compare it. So here you can see this one has got a gravity of two, whereas this one has a gravity of one. So obviously this is selling more. Chances of you getting a commission will be higher with this one. Go through your list, pay attention to the ones with the highest gravity. Also pay attention to the sale. So this one, the average sale is over $170. Now asking someone to spend $170 on something might be a bigger ask than asking them to spend, say, 20 bucks on something or 26 bucks. So bring that into the equation too. And I know it's going to be very tempting for you to, to want to promote higher ticket offers. I mean, these are still low ticket offers. Let's be, let's be honest about things, but still people are price sensitive. So a $20 sale is going to be easier to make than a $170 sale. So think about that as well. What a good tactic could be is to find products like this one that have got a low initial sale, a decent commission rate, and then an average rebuild total, which is pretty high. So that's over $100. So what this means is on the front end, they have a low ticket item that is probably going to be an impulse buy. As soon as someone makes that purchase, they're then asked to buy a second product. In this instance, it's a, it looks to be like a reoccurring membership program. So they pay every month and then you earn a commission. So it looks like this marketer has at least some kind of funnel in place. So let's go have a look at, at this product. Do make sure that the sales page is in line with your values. Pretty nice sales page, pretty clean. But one thing I've noticed, if we just close that a second, it doesn't have a dedicated affiliate page. Whereas this one, if we click through to that, here it's going to give you banner ads that you can take and use. It's going to walk you through how to get set up with your hop link. I'll talk about that in a second. It's going to give you promotional videos to use a review template. This is going to give you something that you can use. And I would say use this, but don't spin it. Spun content isn't going to work in the same way anymore. Sample testimonials. That's fantastic. So there it's giving you social proof that you can just take and use and it's inviting you to ask for a review copy. So you just email them, tell them what you're going to do. They'll give you a free copy so you can you can do genuine reviews. So keep an eye out for, for programs that do that because it tells you that they care about their affiliates. Let's move on to the next section of this, which is all about your hop link. So if you click promote, what it's going to do, it's going to ask, it's going to ask me to sign into to the account. 
So there it's got my account nickname and I want you to pay attention to tracking ID. We're going to come back to that in a second, but here we have generated hop links. So you could just take that, just copy it straight as, and then use that in, in your marketing material. You might be tempted to just have a load of links from articles and banner ads and all that stuff on your website. That's a mistake, huge, huge mistake. Avoid doing that. That will not work. And I know it sounds easy and a lot of marketers will still insist that that's the way to do it. They're wrong. I've got 20 years experience in this stuff. I remember when people started doing that. I remember seeing how effective it was. And I've also seen the decline in how effective that is. Don't do it. I want you to do really well. I want you to make money. That's the whole point. That's why I'm here to help you do that. And I'm only going to give you advice that will help you to make money. Think about how we can track it. So if we're going with email, just type in something like email and that's going to create a tracking ID. So then we click generate hop links. Have a look at this. So we've got the same link, which is encrypted, but then at the end we have this section email. So now when we have a look at the analytics in ClickBank, it's going to tell you which campaigns are running, or running best for you. So your homework for now is to go to ClickBank, find products that you can promote. And listen, there are plenty of other affiliate marketplaces available. Uh, ClickBank tends to have the, the highest number of digital products. We want to go with digital products because that, that commission rate is so high. And that's why we don't go with Amazon because the commission is so low, plus it's physical products. And right now people want digital content. So we're thinking about their needs as well so have a look on clickbank check the the filters make sure that the gravity is at least 0 0.1 okay so things are falling into place fairly nicely here but how do you get people to subscribe to your email list because that's really where you make the money okay so let's go back to the computer and i'll show you that lesson now start the email list building process so the best way to do that is to offer additional value to your visitors and offer them an ethical bribe. This is called a lead magnet. It entices them to join your email list. So we're going to go ahead and make one right now. So I want you to go to canva.com. This is going to allow you to create one very quickly, very easily. And then once you create your free account on Canva, go to the search bar, type in report and we have a drop down here click report we've got lots of templates to choose from so choose one that is relevant to your audience to your niche and then we're going to start editing it so we might want something pretty basic pretty clean like this and the great thing with canva is we can add up to 30 pages for free. So here you can see it's already given us 10 pages to use. We don't have to use all of them. If we want to delete some, we can just delete them like that. If we want to add more, we can add some. We can add blank ones as well, or we can copy existing ones. There we go, and it duplicates that. So, what do you put on these reports? Well, there is a temptation in our marketing community to associate volume with value. That's not true. So get it out of your head that the more val the more content you give someone, the higher the value. It's not about that. It's about the quality of the content you give them. So when you're creating your lead magnets, just condense down everything they need to know to the essential components. Don't create long-winded 30, 40 page PDFs. Nobody is going to read that. Brutal, I know, but the fact is people want short, sharp, easy to consume content so they can just look at something, know what they have to do and get on with it. So that's what you want to give them with your lead magnet. So don't have pages and pages worth of content. If you can make it even bullet points, that's probably better so they have just a, 
a very basic understanding of what they need to do next to help move them along their journey just a little bit. So here you want to focus on potential solutions, presenting options that are available, and you can monetize these lead magnets in the form of product direct recommendations. So for example, let's say you have a web hosting guide. So maybe like web hosting guide and you want to teach people about the best options out there for hosting. You could have a company one, let's say, let's call it SiteGround because I use SiteGround. I think they're amazing. SiteGround, some blurb about why they're awesome and then uh, sign sing <laughs> sign up here and this could be an affiliate link so that's one way to monetize uh, your lead magnets or it could be to a product that you have either way you want to make sure that these are monetized in some way because some people will want to pull the trigger and, and get the uh, the solution the paid solution immediately some people won't and that's fine because you are delivering value to both people. So make these really quick and easy. Don't spend too long on it. Focus on the value it delivers. Once that's done, where do you host it? Well, oh, actually, how do you download it? So here we have a download button. We can choose, where is it? We can choose, that's it, which type. It's going to suggest PDF print. Don't do that. What you want is PDF standard because it's a small file size. So go with PDF standard, click download. That will download to your computer. And now we can host that somewhere else. So what we need to do is go to WordPress. Let me show you how to do that. In your WordPress dashboard, you've got this section on the left hand side. It says media, library, add new. Click on add new. It's going to take you to an upload section so here we can drag in files now just for demo purposes i'm just going to drag in uh, a jpeg a png so I'm click that it's going to upload and it doesn't matter what the file is because if you click edit it's going to take you <laughs> oh look at that so it's going to take you to the file url so we take that copy that take a note of it and then we want to we want to use that in an email so when someone subscribes to our email list the very first email they receive is going to have a link to that lead magnet where they can download it okay so now we have all the pieces in place so the next step is to go to wordpress and you only have to create two pages here so the first page is a content page this can be an article or a video you know, if you're really stuck, you can just take a, a video from YouTube and slap that on there as well. Write some original copy to explain what it is and why people should watch it if you're really stuck. But if you can, I really do encourage you to create one piece of unique content that tackles one big problem that your customers face. So this piece of content really must help them. You know, it must help solve part of their problem and listen Despite what those greedy gurus are going to say to you, it really is important that you do not try to sell on this page. This is one of the biggest mistakes that most newbies make. And because you only have one chance to ask each visitor to take action, asking them to buy something straight away is a really fast way to break their trust. Now, when you already have an audience... You know, you can start asking people to buy stuff. That's fine. But if you're still in the early stages, then don't try and sell too early. You know, instead, on that content page, you link to a separate page, the second page that you make. And it's that page that asks people to join your email list. So it has the form on there that you get from your, your email provider. You put that on there. You give them a good reason to, to join, tell them to get that freebie. And now all you have to do is drive targeted traffic to the content page. The reason why we do that is because content pages are easier to promote. OK, we can put them anywhere 
in front of a target audience, it's going to get traffic. Plus, it builds trust because you've already helped people for free without trying to sell anything. So that immediately builds trust. And then when you ask them to click on to the second page to opt into your email list, they now have a reason to trust you. They now have a reason to listen to you. So they have a reason to subscribe to your email list. And it's on that. That's where you do the selling. OK, and this is what separates amateur affiliate marketers from professional affiliate marketers. So let me give you an example here. This is a live example on the Profit Copilot website. Here's a piece of content. So I've got a video from my YouTube channel. I've also got the podcast version there. And now I have the text version as a blog post underneath. Now, there's two ways of doing this. So here you can see that I'm embedding the actual form on the piece of content itself. Now, I understand that that might not be possible for you. And that's OK, because if we scroll down to the bottom of this page, if we go right down here, we can see that I've got a link to the landing page here. So if I click on that, it's just going to take you to a page that you may have already seen before. And there it asks people to opt in to my email list. And now you have the foundations of a business that generates passive income. But if you want to go further with this and take the next few steps, I've got something that I think you're really going to love because I'm going to show you how I grew my hobby site to four million hits a month. I'm going to show you how one of my students grew his email list to over 48,000 subscribers in record time. And I'm also going to show you how one famous blogger increased his revenue by almost 500 percent, almost immediately after joining my program. So check that out when you go to profitcopilot.com slash join. And if you found this useful, give it a thumbs up below, subscribe to the channel too. And hit that little notification bell so you never miss an update from me. And I will hopefully see you again in a couple of days time. Take care.